y'all. This is Mallory Irvin, and it's time for all of us to live fully. It's so important in this crazy world of ours that we stay connected, inspired, and motivated to be and do our best. And that's not always easy. I'm here with my guests and friends to share the stories and lessons we've learned to help you live your best life every day and truly begin living fully. Let's make it happen and get started with today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Living Fully Podcast. I'm bringing you guys my friend and interior designer to the stars, April Tomlin, today to talk all things interiors. Now, when I ask people to submit questions for this episode, I got over 15,000 responses. So what I did was I went through and I grabbed the ones that were most asked and the information in today's episode is going to be amazing if you are designing a home, if you want to in the future, if you live in a teeny tiny 600 square foot apartment, or if you live in some big old house that you're, how, that you're like, how in the heck do I decorate this house? We are going to get a lot of tips and tricks from wall colors and paint to how to source art to just how to feel at peace in your home. So before I begin this, I want to do an intro to my friend April. In case you guys don't follow me on Instagram or YouTube, and have seen her on my page. So April Tomlin started April Tomlin Interiors just over 10 years ago. Since then, her texturized and distinctive style have attracted an A-list roster, including Thomas and Lauren Rhett Aikens, Tyler and Haley Hubbard, Brian and Brittany Kelly, both from Florida Georgia Line, Jason Aldean, Maren Morris, Kelsey Ballerini, Dave and Kelly Haywood from Lady A, Kristen Cavallari, and I don't know why, but I'm included also on this roster. And then there are numerous other music industry leaders also on her roster as well. April has also designed some of the city's most anticipated retail spaces like Uncommon James, Happily Gray Home, and Shop Living with Landon. Using organic, raw materials and artistic, natural plays on design, juxtaposed with clean and simple palettes, April is redefining Southern design with her fresh yet deeply grounded style. April lives in Nashville with the two loves of her life, her husband Ford and two beautiful daughters, Everly and Adeline. And like I said, I call April a friend, and I am so happy to have her on the podcast today. So here she is. And I am so excited to be sitting in the office that was birthed over two years by April Tomlin Interiors with April Tomlin. (laughs) Hi, April. Hi. (laughs) Let me tell you, just in the first one second of this podcast, how you are before the podcast starts and how you are when the podcast starts are so similar. You're just same, good, <laughs> literally just such a little light. Oh, that's sweet. It's kind of you to say. And speaking of putting each other to ease, you know, April, if you guys have followed along on Instagram or YouTube, has helped me as an interior designer with some rooms in my home. And you guys have seen her in that space. But April is also my friend and someone that is just through and through, I'm going to say this, like just such an ideal person. You are such a great friend. You're such a great mom. You're such a great business person. And I just know that from firsthand experience. And I've talked you off some cliffs. You've talked me off some cliffs. I try to lift April up because I foresee April's future before she does like a psychic. She does. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. (laughs) She's got something that ain't nobody got. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, let me tell you what. To anybody, obviously, the people that are listening are huge followers of Mallory. And I'm sure not many people get on and talk about you. You know, you're always talking oh, about no, other people. I talk about myself on here. I, I, they, I don't nobody need to talk about me. Uh, well, I am <laughs> just for like one tiny little second because I am like pretty bad at Instagram and I'm very much like behind the scenes. The, you know, being in front makes me extremely, uh, you know, uncomfortable and. I think it's like the artist in me, Mm -hmm. you know, you always talk to artists and they're like super insecure Mm -hmm. about their work. It's never good enough. They're never good enough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's just a very, really uncomfortable, you know, spot to be in. And you have been a supporter and like a pusher of my personal business. And um, I actually attribute the success of a lot of the success on Instagram and not necessarily the work, but you know, how I've put the work out there to you because before you, I was very quiet and I would post like once 
every couple of months and I thought I was doing a great job. <laughs> You were doing a great job, but now you're doing a better job. <laughs> doing a much better well, job. Well, I'm just so happy because so many people that follow me now get to see your amazing work. It's awesome for the family that gets to live in your homes. Yeah. But man, is it awesome to see it on the outside. And the world just needed that. There's something about interior design that lifts people up in a way that is unlike a lot of other things. It is. And I've heard you say this before. When you go on vacation or you walk into someone's home and you say, ah, I just feel so peaceful here. And you're always like, you can create that in your home. If you do it right, (laughs) you can create all these things in your own home. Every every home has four walls, you know, and and it's what you do, you know, inside those four walls. And, you know, of course, the world I operate in involves people that, you know, have a lot of money to spare. And You know, what I think is so great about podcasts and Instagram and the social world, and that's kind of, I had to like give myself over to that, is I don't really need Instagram for my clients. Mm -hmm. They have already hired me. They have the money to spend. Mm -hmm. And you got a waiting list for next ones. You ain't. And I've got a waiting list. (laughs) Struggling in that department. No. (laughs) But what I have started to gear towards is to help people that cannot afford, you know, a designer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I'm being really truthful, look, is it ever going to look exactly the way if I came in and did it myself or another designer came in and do it? Probably not exactly, but it can look amazing. It's the same thing as like, am I going to get the same result if I work on my little mirror in the gym, in my own home gym, whether, and I got a personal Mm -hmm. trainer, is my body going to look the exact same? Mm -hmm. Probably not. (laughs) Probably not. (laughs) Because that (laughs) trainer is going to be like telling me exactly what to do, Uh exactly how to do it. Yeah. If I had like the time for a nutritionist versus just like Googling some healthy uh-huh. meals, I mean, there's a difference for sure, but it doesn't yeah. mean that I can't work out of my own mm-hmm. home, cook some healthy food from mm-hmm. Pinterest. Mm-hmm. And so I've just kind of started to use the platform to help people, you know, create a little haven for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. And, it, and it's truly something that you do. So in my personal experience, and I'm going to link this video with April, one of the coolest things that she did for me was Shepherd's Nursery. I did not know what my baby was, but April knew what my baby was. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that uh, he was a boy. And she and her team, who is amazing, her team of 12, it's like tripled in the last year. Yes, for sure. As you guys have grown. When I went in to have a C-section, she, they came in and they did the whole nursery. I trust April so much and was so grateful just to have the opportunity for her to do this that like they did the whole room and it was such an emotional experience to walk into that room with my new baby. And like, I just like fell over in tears. It was so, oh, like you can change the feeling that you have when you walk into a room, you breathe life into rooms and it's so amazing and so different than I've I've seen a lot of interior designers and interior decorators too. You know, it's interesting is, is like, especially here recently, one thing I've started doing is, you know, obviously what I do can be extremely materialistic and I don't like to view it that way. I like to view it as creative and I invest in artists who make these pieces and, you know, we're obviously designing some of these pieces, sofas, you know, I'm collaborating with the artists that are doing the art for the wall. So I view it a little differently. A lot of stuff that we put in these spaces can be, you know, not super affordable, but then I look at the artists that I'm supporting and how much time it takes them to make those things. So I view it a little differently. Mm -hmm. One thing that has really helped me like connect to the spaces and really care about the spaces is, and I'll kind of tear up about it, but I go into the homes, especially if we're building them. And I, and I pray, I pray about that house and I pray about the people that are going to live there. I pray that, you know, God would be honored there. And it does do something to the design work throughout that process. That's People don't so know cool. that I'm doing it. I don't think I've ever told anybody. This mm. is the first time I think I've ever told anybody that I do that. But it really, when I go sit down to design, which people always ask, like, am I the designer of the work? There's not a single person on the staff that would tell you I'm not. I just don't. I don't talk to the clients, really. Well, you can't. I you're can't. Not, you're I'm designing. Where you can't. I only want to design. And so that's all I'm doing. I'm quiet. I'm either doing stuff like this mm-hmm. or I'm designing. I'm really not doing anything else. And, um, but if I can go and I can, you know, pray for it, there's something in my soul that's just now it's become, you know, more of a spiritual thing for me. And so then I care more and like my team will get so frustrated because, you know, I'm not, I'm not the only sole person that designs that house. Mm -hmm. So if they're designing something 
And I can tell that maybe they just didn't have time that day. You know, I'll ask for revisions and they're like, seriously, this is good enough. And I'm like, not yet. It's not there yet. Something else that is that I like to talk about, because when somebody gets to a level that you're at or when someone is super good at what they do, people see them the middle of the journey and they see the end and they see the however many tens of thousands of dollar piece of furniture you put somewhere and then they just like write it off. Well, well, it's always been easy, probably. Now, guys, I love a good success story and I love hearing what makes someone who they are. And, a, and you have a really amazing one and one that a lot of people listening to this podcast probably have and probably are counting themselves out from doing something because they're like, yeah, well, I was raised by a single mom and I didn't have anything growing up and I don't have anybody I can ask about creating a business with. So I can't do it. So tell us a little bit about the way that you grew up. And I really love the, the story about your mom and the first time that like she saw you rearranging stuff at yeah. like seven in a house that yeah. she was selling. So first of all, I want to start off by saying to anybody who is poor, <laughs> actually, no, so, I actually want to address people that weren't poor. When I talk about my family, I want to make sure that everybody understands that my mom is one of the most loving, like she will have a front row seat in heaven, period. Mm -hmm. Dealt some hard things. To one of the kindest, you know, a more recent story was <laughs> we've obviously like me and my family have, have done pretty well in the past few years. Doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way, mm -hmm. but that's how it is today. Yeah. And <laughs> my mom has always, you know, given everything, you know, she just you know, doesn't have a lot, even still to this day. So, you know, we, we obviously help her out in, in any way that we can and she deserves it. But <laughs> I ran out of power. She saw it on Instagram and she does not live here. And she was like, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, lives three hours from here and said, so it texts me. She's like, well, I'll, honey, I'll bring up my generator. <laughs> and I was that like, awesome. that's the kind of mom that you are. You know what I mean? That's awesome. And so I, I just want to preface the story because the way that I grew up doesn't mean that there wasn't love. It just means that we didn't have a lot. Yeah. And so when I say we didn't have a lot, of, it, it's some people say that and they don't really mean it. And, you know, and I really mean it. And it's because, you know, my dad left and he's back in my life now, but he did leave for a period of time. And, you know, my mom was had two kids and, you know, she had three jobs and it was all always around house stuff. But a single mom is a single mom. Yeah. You know. She and and also like her strength is not like decorating at all, yeah, or like anything like that. Like she just doesn't have the eye for mm -hmm. it. And so with my house, it was like pretty embarrassing, I would say. And I, I never wanted my friends to come over. I just yeah. didn't want you know, I just didn't want people over. And so when we were eight, one of the first, it was seven or eight, but I think it was eight. One of the very first stories was that she came. She still to this day can't figure out how we moved the bed because it was like a king bed. <laughs> and we had painted, me and my brother, who's 18 months younger than me, had painted all of the walls in her bedroom with this paint that she had <laughs> probably purchased a year before. And we, and we got as high as we could. And she walked in. And, you know, in that day, it wasn't like if you, were, you didn't have any money, like it wasn't illegal to not have a babysitter. Yeah. So we just didn't have one. <laughs> it was and, a different, uh, different day. Different April. day. We would all be in jail for that today. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, that's kind of where her first memory is of, of that sort of thing. Yeah. And that continued on. I mean, there's, there's countless stories where that continued on throughout my life, but you know, it really, I don't think I was born this way. I, you know, I think with the desire, I think I was born with the talent, but I don't, I don't think I was born with the desire. I think the desire actually came from a need or an insecurity. And then, you know, just like, you know, the rainbow after the rain concept is, is why I care so much about design. You know, I, especially kids rooms, man, you get me into a house with kids and I'm like, I, all I think about is them because I can go back. It's so important, you know, and you don't have to have a lot of money to make it feel like home. So I want to emphasize that, but you know, a home is important. Yeah. It's important to that kid. Mm -hmm. It really is. And and so uh, obviously it was because I was trying to paint things and hang yeah. things. And that's re that's a really cool story. And like you'd go, so a real estate agent was one of her jobs or something. You yep. go in there and you start Same. rearranging yep. furniture. Yep. Isn't that cool that like God gifts us with these things yeah. that you can even see when you're a child? Yeah. That's a really cool story. I love that story. So I was like, she's got to repeat that story today. Before we go into the Instagram questions, which I think last, I, I counted last night and there were almost 16,000. I didn't count, but like you can see, like you can go into your analytics and you can 
So guys, Gee, if I, I don't thought get you, to your I thought question, you made up that number. Like, no, 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 no. It was six. It was sixteen thousand, like three hundred eighty-three or something. <laughs> Don't Jeez. nobody like April. <laughs> They're not curious at all. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I, I'm going to jump into some of these like rapid fire questions, but something that I really love about you that is cool. And because this is about living fully and it's about more than four walls is this whole, like you're very anti like boss babe. And oh. I hate it. I really like that. Cause I've heard you say different things about it. You're like, why don't you just call me a boss? Why you got to add babe at the end? <laughs> You know? Yeah. Like, what is this it, whole culture where women have to own their own businesses and show up like this on Instagram and do, oh my God, what happened to it? It's great to be a stay at home mom yeah. and a teacher oh. and a, and not have a social media presence. Oh, it just, it boggles my mind. So one of my, Jessica, one, the one that I just recently talked about, you know, she came on and obviously I'm pushed to be on Instagram more and to let you guys in to my life, even though that makes me we're all like extremely uncomfortable and I have my boundaries with my kids and things, but uh, Mallory's laughing because she knows how true this is. Mm-hmm. I like could like squirm out of my chair mm-hmm. just even talking about it. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> Je- Jessica, you know, she came on and I hope she doesn't mind me telling the story, but I don't think that she will. So she, she unprivated her account when she came onto my team because she was just like, I should be cooler and I should be yeah. like, and when you come onto the team, you get a lot of requests and stuff because, you know, people think that, well, like they're going to get some house mm-hmm. shots or something. Mm-hmm. And it's like, not everybody on my team is a designer. They have like normal houses yeah. and yeah. <laughs> struggle like the rest of us. And she, and then she realized how dumb that was. And she privated herself <laughs> right back. And she was like, I'm private. I have nothing to say uh, except for my kids. And like, you know, and that, and that was her choice. And, and not to say that if she opened her life up, that that would be bad. It's just that that's how people feel. Like, I should want to do this. I should have to do this. And and it could be a million different things unrelated to social media. It could be, you know, it's a day, da- it, being a female is you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Yeah, that's if you truth. work, you feel guilty. If you don't work, you feel guilty. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of this never ending cycle of, it's this never ending cycle of guilt. And look, for me, you should do what God calls you to do and you should feel very powerful in that. And, or, you know, and uh, granted, not everybody believes in God, but just being female, you should have the right to do exactly what it is that you want to do without there being guilt associated, mm-hmm. not guilt from your husband, mm-hmm. because that can happen a lot. I've, he- I've heard my friend's husbands even say to me, well, you know, she's not like you, she doesn't work. And I, I could like snap their neck mm-hmm. right in half right in that moment. Yeah. I'm like, do you say that to your wife? Because that's wrong. Mm-hmm. That is not right. Like, let me tell you what, when I go to work, it's an easier life. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. People ask Sarah, <laughs> oh, how, I know. People ask Sarah, I how to sit in this office, it's easier than <laughs> being down there in the living room. 100%. Uh, okay. So speaking of Instagram, I, like I said, I got like thousands and thousands and thousands of questions. So what I did was I compiled some of the ones that were asked over and over again, and we'll do them kind of like short answers so that we can get through a lot of them. Perfect. A lot of people it's, it's amazing to be able to ask a top interior designer questions like this. And it can really make a difference. And one question that a lot of people asked, that a lot of people asked me, because I think they saw me move into an agreeable gray house and realized the gray was not agreeable anymore. Whenever you came in and said, the gray's out, it pulls yellow. We got to paint it white. <laughs> Everybody's like, wait a second, the gray is out? Or at least this kind of gray? Okay, so what white is in? I need to know. Like they want it, you know? Yeah. When the trends change... You want to be able to know, okay, exactly what color are you using, April? Okay, so a lot of people ask, what is the best white or what are your tips for white on walls? Okay, so my that is a great question. So you might want to like tune your husband into this portion because the first thing, if you moved into even a, a brand new house like Mallory or you've lived in a house for a while or you painted it gray and you go to your husband and you're like, I want to paint it white. He's going <laughs> to look at you like, no, we are not spending that money. That is not, and you don't have to get your own paintbrush out. That's what I would have done back in the day is get my own power. I would have you painted did. it myself. You would have come home at the end of your work day. I'd have painted this house yeah. white, but it is a difference. And here's why uh, we'll start out with the whys of, of, of white. Cause look, I don't, I don't paint all the walls in the houses that I'm designing white because, well, frankly, I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, some of my walls have different colors on them and different spaces. But if you are doing your house, without a design team or a design firm or just by yourself and you, and you can have a good eye or you could totally not have a good eye. 
one of the easiest things that you can do to freshen up your house is to make it white. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm going to get asked later on about design trends because I always do. And, you know, to be honest, white is on the way out technically in the world of like L core, L decor design. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're like the bit, you know, the fancier designers. Right. But if you're like me, you know, I still wear jeans and a black t- Like somebody told me the other day that skinny jeans were out. And I was just like, frankly, I don't <laughs> give one F. <laughs> I am 5'3". I can't wear a bell bottom. Don't care. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't care if it's in or in out. Like, it is, I, that's the jeans that I've got. Uh-huh. And they're going to work with my body. It's like white walls it, are always going to work to freshen and brighten. You know, you can go back historically, and I don't even want to go back too far historically because then you get in trouble for saying wrong words. Uh-huh. But, yeah. You know, if you look at certain homes, that they're white. Yeah. I mean, hundreds of years ago, they're white. So, and it's never, it's never went out, never going to go mm-hmm. out. It might not be like the trending thing to do, but you know, when you don't have a designer, it's definitely a sure thing to do. <laughs> and so with that said, the reason is, is because unless you're buying white furniture, like a bunch of white furniture, mm-hmm. I'm sitting in your office right now. And we decided to do this, like a mustard, like velvet kind of antique looking sofa with some like cool pop of modern art. Mm-hmm. Well, had these walls been gray that would, it would not look right. And I would have been forced into like, oh, can I, I got to get, I got to worry about that fabric and I got to worry about the art. It makes life a lot easier because you can go out and buy like a sand colored sofa. Mm -hmm. If you have gray walls, you can't do that. Yeah. You know? So it just like kind of goes away. It it just, it's, it's, it's the way that art museums are designed. You know, they have to uphold lots of different types of art. So they paint the background white so that all the art coming into the art studio yeah. can stand on its own. That makes so much sense. And then, so I think my walls are Sherwin-Williams Snowbound in an eggshell finish, I'm pretty sure. But how you picked that, wasn't it that you matched it to the trim? Yeah. So a lot of people ask my favorite color of white, and I'm hesitant to always say that mm-hmm. without this. Because your trim was Snowbound. The most expensive thing that you can do in your house is repaint mm-hmm. all the trim and the doors. If everything is the same shade of white, it just looks white. Yeah. It just does, you know, unless you start, t- you know, throwing like other white things on top of it. So the, the first thing that you should do is look at your white trim and try to go color match. That should be your wall color, unless it's just awful, like yellow or something. Yeah. But like wh- whites, they all vary, you know, but, you know, most people that are asking these questions, they don't want to paint all the trim in their house. I, I don't even want to do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I did the same thing to my house, which is how I got to to loving pure white is because the trim in my house was pure white. What's pure white? Sherwin Williams? Sherwin Williams. Okay. Pure white. And I painted all the walls to match the trim because I, yeah. I, you know, bought a spec home, wasn't about to paint mm-hmm. all those trim and those yeah. doors. So if you're building, you know, you, do, you don't have to be tied to your mm-hmm. trim. And so that's when paint colors then then come into play. And so... You know, one of my favorites that's like a, a little a little warmer. If you are into like more earth tones, I wouldn't apply this to like like Mallory. You live in like a bright world. Mm-hmm. Like I'm looking at like lots of bright colors mm-hmm. right now. Your nails, your outfit, mm-hmm. your art. You know, um, and that's your personality, mm-hmm. and it's super fitting. So you know, a pure white or snowbound would work for you because it can hold those bright colors. Yeah. It's bright. It's a bright white. Mm-hmm. Now you got Greek villa and white dove who are a little softer, a little warmer, still very pretty. And those hold the the earth tones a little yeah. better. So if you're going to do like sands and, uh, you know, rust colors and like deep greens mm-hmm. and, you know, that sort of thing, then I would use like the warmer of the okay. of the whites. Yeah. That's if you're, you know, you know, kind of building from yeah the ground. Up. That's great. And then what about like just kind of because you do a lot of dark, like you're, yeah. you're not whenever we're talking about my living room, you're like, now, if you want to get really like you know, have a really cool design moment, we could e- we could do a dark wall. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. Can do it. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do that. It's not your personality. I didn't know you as well as I do now. I would die if I did that. Yeah, yeah I would not <laughs> recommend that now. So what mm-hmm. are some dark colors that are kind of go-tos of yours? Because you're not going to have a black trim probably. So if you just had to pick a few dark colors that y'all use a lot. If, if you're going like super dark, so like for instance, like when you open... Most of my, ha- all of my house is pure white except the entry. Mm-hmm. So what I did in the entry is I painted the trim and the walls iron ore, which is like almost oh, like yeah. a black and mm-hmm. like the front door. So what brand is you it? Ca- and I have like an antique piece in there. And so it feels kind of vibier. Mm-hmm. So if you're wanting to make a train, now if you keep like the trim white, it can feel very cottagey that, yeah. that, 
black can, but I turned it all black to where it feels like really moody and uh-huh. vibey. And then as you continue through, you know, through my house, then it goes back to white. But if you look through my work, you'll see, you know, different little black rooms here and there. And I usually do iron ore or ca- or if you're going like black, black, caviar. These are all sherwin wins, I believe. And then um, Urban Bronze has like a little bit more of a brown undertone to it. That can be really pretty. So, you know, if you, you know, have the luxury of having man caves, mm-hmm. especially, or you just want like a vibey yeah. little space, that's a really great thing. Sandbar has been like my go-to lately. It is a, a sand bar color. <laughs> like a sandy, <laughs> yeah. like a tan. It's like a, it's kind of tan, but it has some like golden hues in it. It's okay. kind of like a more up-to-date. It's got like a, a more gray undertone okay. than, than we did. Like I, I know everybody's mind is going, oh my God, tan, like my mom's house when I was in the seventh grade. <laughs> if you're my age and you're 40, that's what you're thinking. You're like, oh my gosh, no, that was no. I don't want to use the word tan, like let's say taupe or sand or, you or know, gold or yeah. earthy. Okay. But those colors have definitely transformed from the times. Right. You know, yeah. makes and sense. Makes it, sense. It definitely gives you a peaceful feel. So I use those on, I've been using that a lot on doors. Like when I go in uh-huh. and paint doors, you know, you see a, like five years ago, everybody's painting the doors black uh-huh. or like, you know, whatever. And we've been painting a lot of our like houses, like if they're white, the doors will be like sandbar huh. to kind of look like a wood door. Okay. I like that. So, speaking of, how long does a design trend last? I remember I asked this because when you were like, what's your budget for your bedroom? And I was like, well, it depends on how long is this going to be in style? Because you think, okay, this is an investment. But design, certain parts of design are an investment, but certain parts aren't. Certain parts like change and are out, especially the real trendy stuff. I'm yes. learning. I'm yes. seeing. Oh, yeah. So, what do you think is the general rule of thumb for the trendy stuff? Like five years, 10 years? I mean, it's kind of just like fashion. I mean, it can be in and out and like, it, you know, some of the things can be in and out and like, a, like literally like a second. Like I'm thinking of different like patterns. Like you'll see all of a sudden like a pattern, like a Chippendale pattern, like make this and everybody's using it and then it goes out real yeah. quick, you know? So I, I tend to like with trends, I pay attention to trends, obviously, because that's my, yeah. that's my world and I am fascinated, Yeah, you know? Like we're clothes, like I don't pay attention to that. Just wear what I wear and mm-hmm. that's that. So I'm sure a lot of people feel that way about interiors. But for trends, I pay attention. So obviously everybody's talking about white being out, white cabinets. You know, the use of white a ton is kind of, you're not going to be in a magazine right now with mm-hmm. a lot of white. You're not going to see a lot of white yep. in magazines, things like that. But for me, I love doing like funky or cool stuff, like painted floors right now. is like a cool thing, like painting your wood floors. I'm doing one right now with like a, a kitchen and it's brand new wood floors and we're painting like, y'all are, y'all are going to think this is crazy, but it's like a light blue and a light rust orange wow. stripe through the kitchen. It's that's cool. Wild. That's cool though. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be wild. So I love trends and I love people that are willing to go there, mm-hmm. you know, but you kind of got to, you know, you kind of got to have the budget yeah, and the willingness or the they give a crap enough mm-hmm. to undo it. Yeah. And so in like five years. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. In like five years, <laughs> okay. you're be like, what have I done? So what is what are the things that are tried and true? So people ask, there's like, I'm building a house. What are the things that you invest in? Like, what are the things that stay? Windows. Okay. So one of the things that you can't undo easily is exteriors, right? Okay. Like, you know, you can manipulate interiors pretty easily. Exteriors always cost more money. Windows are next to impossible. So I personally like direct set windows. It's going to be very hard for me to explain what that is, but uh, you can all, always look it up. So that's something that you definitely want to, if you're building a house, you definitely want to pay attention to your windows. Go to the window meeting, make sure your operating windows, are, you know, you have to have a certain amount of operating windows in, or one in each mm-hmm. bedroom. And so push them to the outsides of the houses, like the hmm. sides, like don't have them on the front. Cause if you have direct set windows and then an operating window, the, the operating windows are thicker. Yeah. So. Interesting. That, yeah, it's in- interesting. Go to your window meeting if you don't have a designer. Huh. Uh, most people, I always go to window meetings because okay. uh, that it's really important. So direct set windows, a thinner profile, like those are gonna. Th- that's something you want to invest in over like a double hung if you're building mm-hmm. right now and it's in your budget. I would say that another thing would be your flooring. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. people don't take enough time you know, an energy to put into your wood floor. I would say like something that I feel like is going to be around for a while is just like white oak floors. White oak floors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I usually do them with a bevel in them so that they don't all look flat, like mm-hmm. in my nicer homes. 
that gets a little more, more complicated. Mm-hmm. You got to lay it at a certain time because it can't get too much damage. Okay. And then it's just very, it's too technical to talk about on here, but, but a, a good white oak floor, we'll, we'll do like a natural sealer on it. I'll give it to you so you can link like what sealer yeah. we've used. Uh, it's kind of on some of the more affordable homes I do. We'll just pop a sealer on it. White floors tend to lend itself to like not showing as much. Yeah. Dirt, traction from dogs, things like that. I recently in my own home sanded down my floors. I, you know. Yeah, I know. Which is so cool because April was April was about to build this humongous home and took like a 180 and was like, I'm going to stay in my home for longer and I'm going to make a spec home into something special, not look like a spec home. You did really cool stuff. Yeah. To your to your home. You yeah. painted your cabinets in your kitchen. Yeah. You sanded your floors down and, you know, follow April on Instagram and they're going to be doing a lot more homes and showing a lot more of these homes that April is the designer and the client, I guess, on. Yeah. Uh, we can't say too much about that, but it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Okay. So what else? So those are a couple things that are in. So what else, what would you spend your money on then? What What would stay? Like windows, for 10 years? wood floors. I would spend my money on, if you're building a house on, yeah, windows, floors, doors, you can almost like divide up your cabinetry. There are, you know, custom cabinets, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then there are like places that you can go and they're like half custom, half mm-hmm. not. You just kind of order. They mm-hmm. order the cabinet. They're not made on site. So, I, you know, I think that you can get re- very creative. And if you're doing like a wood cabinet, you want that to be like somebody making it. Like yeah. that you can, you know, that they make it and they bring them in. And, and then, But then you can go upstairs in your bathrooms and you can, you know, just do a shaker style cabinet painted a color. Don't try to do wood. Always when I'm upstairs and I'm on a budget, I'll use like Delta faucets. There's like this one yeah. wall mount that's, you know, pretty affordable. And so I always save money upstairs and like go big downstairs Mm -hmm. when I'm flying on a budget with some of the houses that I'm building. And then with furniture in general, where to spend and where to save, I would say where to spend would be like one place would be your master bed, right? Nobody's touching it really. It really doesn't get touched that much. It really doesn't. And it's such a feeling when I walk into my bedroom after you did my bedroom. It changed the way I sleep, the way I wake up in the morning, the way that I start my day. You brought the feeling into that room. Yeah. It's one of those things that doesn't really get touched that much. Sofas, eh, that's hard because, you know, kids ruin sofas. Yeah. My kids jump. I saved on my sofa. You You do encourage me to. I did. Because all of y'all had that same sofa. Yes. That was like not an outrageous sofa. Yeah. What design trends are coming in in 2021? So the, the use of color is is really big right now. You know, you're coming off COVID. Lots of people are talking about how, you know, color makes people happy. And people spent so much more time in their homes. It probably yeah. made them value their homes more. There's never been a busier time for interior design ever that I have seen personally. Hmm. I like to think we're on a waiting list because we're so good. But also another huge reason we're on a waiting list is because everybody decided that their home was literally the most mm-hmm. important thing that they had. Yeah. You know, that's it, cool when that's they're a, when they're staying at home because yeah. they're there all the time. And so, if you're going to stay at your house all the time or value your house in a way that you didn't before, I would say that you know, even using your spaces wisely is is trending. Like yeah. you hear that. Like I, I was on a it was a house beautiful panel, and that was the topic. The topic was about reevaluating your spaces. That's so cool because how many houses do you walk in that have a formal living room and you're like, do you? So how formal do you guys eat? Because I don't like right. Do you, what a waste of a space. What a waste of if you're going to be here all the time. You 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 start to like look at your spaces and you're like, well, I don't ever yeah use that space. Mm-hmm. What can I use it for? How can I make that space and just reimagine your space? So color is trending. So using your space more wisely is trending. Pools, pools. Oh my God, everybody wants pools a pool. are trending. You can't get a okay. pool. You can't get a pool in Nashville for two years. Really you can't. If you wanted a pool today, right now, you couldn't get one for two years. Really? Nope. That is so interesting that a pool is trending. It's because okay. COVID. Because people spent more time at home and they were like, if something else happens, I got to have something I, for these kids I to do. I got to have something for these kids to do. I will put in a tiny little <laughs> miniature pool, but I got to have a pool. Okay. Pools. What's a couple more things that are trending? I would say like the use of wood. I'm seeing a okay. lot more. Okay. I've always been. The- you have. You were very forth thinking on the wood thing. Yeah. Love. I like, love it. Like years and years ago, yeah, you were using love, tons of wood. Tons of wood. Uh-huh. And now it is a thing. Okay. You know, that you see in lots of people's okay. design work. Wood ca- you know, natural wood cabinets versus a painted cabinet. You're seeing that a ton. 
So it, wood doors, interior doors being wood okay. instead of painted. What about concrete? Is concrete on its way out? I would say so, yeah. Like concrete floors are you talking People about? People ask concrete about concrete, paint? like islands, countertops. It's so porous. Look, concrete is so porous. Mm-hmm. It is It is not durable, literally whatsoever. I've used it outside. I think it's a great product outside. Mm-hmm. And not because it's durable, but just because it's meant to be outside. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of concrete yeah. outside. Inside, there is a countertop. It's Caesar stone. It's called fresh concrete. Kind of gives the look of, mm-hmm. uh, it kind of gives a look. We use it a ton, actually. It's not as durable as like a quartzite, but it's it's pretty durable. You got to, you know, be careful with it, but it, it does give that look of concrete. Okay. What's the most important thing in a kitchen renovation? Most important thing in a kitchen renovation? Yeah, okay. Well, depends on what level you're in. If you are listening to this and you are actively using a builder and you have someone drawing for you, whether it's a high-end architect or a low, if they have drawn a hood with a window beside it and another window beside it, seriously, like gather some imagery. There's so many cool kitchens out there that are not cookie cutter that are not cookie cutter. And they just, you know, I just see architects often like placing boxes. It's just like, oh, there's the last kitchen I did. There's a hood, mm-hmm. there's a window, there's a window, there's a, you know, and you just kind of got to reimagine it, right? The one of the homes uh, remodels that I just did, it was drawn like that by by somebody, and we redrew it. And what we did was we hid the hood in a a header. Basically, we dropped down mm-hmm. the ceiling like a soffit, if you want to call it a soffit, mm-hmm. and we put the hood, uh, the vent of the hood inside of that. So we got a very powerful vent that didn't have to get too close to the range. And then from the bottom of the vent, the soffit where the vent is. To the countertop, it was like very long and like from left mm. to right, it was window. So oh, cool. from the bottom, I'm doing another house right now where we're floating the vent hood in front of the window. Okay. So that's obviously the higher end homes. That's the higher end homes. And so the, what if you're on a budget? If you're like, my kitchen's been this way hardware. for 20 years. This is the one thing I want to redo. If you are going to redo your kitchen, like it, look, white cabinets are out, paint the it, mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be an upgrade if you just paint them white. Like if they're old yeah. and like, you know, you're just looking at painting yep. them. You can reface doors instead of ripping everything out. Like mm-hmm. if your door, you know, if you're trying to do it a little bit nicer than just getting the paint out, yep. you can you can reface the doors and just get like just the new doors. And then I would say your hardware. Top knobs is a great option for like a middle of the road hardware. I do a lot of knobs. Okay. Because it is more affordable. Yes. So all those pulls, mm-hmm. you know. That everybody puts in, they're more expensive. Yep. And mm-hmm. they look aged in a mm-hmm. way, you know, that's mm-hmm. what you see in like condos yep. and apartments and things. And so if you can do knobs instead of pulls, so just fill in the holes of your thing mm-hmm. when you're painting, like go ahead and fill in your holes and just switch to knobs. You can have like, there's really cool knobs. Yeah. Like top knobs okay. everywhere. That's a really good little trick of the trade. And then recently in my kitchen, I had to keep my, cabinets for my island and ta- I painted the perimeters and did some upper cabinetry work but the island you know I couldn't put too much money into it so what I did was is I took the countertop off and I wanted to seat more it only set four mm-hmm. and now it sits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. it seats seven okay. same cabinets it was just one row of cabinets so I bought a much larger or p- did a much larger countertop oh huh and then put legs on it. So I so Interesting. I yes. The, Makes sense. So I extended yeah. the countertop out to the left and out towards great the back. Idea. So then now I have side seating yeah. on both sides and on the back. And what kind of countertop did you switch to? I did a honed Taj Mahal, which is my favorite right now. Okay. I am having, I'm struck. If any designers out there want to hit me up with some other options because I can't <laughs> find anything as durable and as pretty as honed Taj Mahal okay. right now. Yeah. And do you, I, I think I already know the answer, but Granite or marble, like in general? So <sighs> marble is making a huge, I mean, people went like, no marble, no marble, mm-hmm. because it's so painful. Now mm-hmm. it's marble, marble. But look, it's just not durable. It's just yeah. not. I mean, mm-hmm. if you are want to work at it, great. Mm-hmm. But you mm-hmm. you got to work at it and you got to love a patina because it is it is definitely going to patina. Where quartzite is a natural stone that is much, much more durable. Okay. Good to know. Okay, what is a tip for a small space to make it look larger and then a large empty wall? I'm I'm going to say both of these people are on a budget. Large empty wall. You can do a lot with wood on large empty walls. Like you did on my wall. Yeah, you can reference your wall. 
another wall I recently did, and I was actually considering this for my hallway because I have a huge wall. Same problem that everybody else has. There are these little ledges. They're just led. They're art ledges. Mm -hmm. I think you can get them on Amazon and they're like, they look wood colored. I was going to paint mine white for sure and get multiples and like make them touch because I have a super long wall. Mm -hmm. But if you can create like a little ledge and then on a long wall and then like get a, like, let's say a 30 by 40 piece of art and then like a 20 by 30. Yeah. And then you lean that on the left side of the ledge and then you skip over a few feet. And do like another 20 by 30, Mm -hmm. you can cover a seven foot space with like three pieces of art. And if you tried to do that without like a ledge and like layering on that ledge, you would have have so much space. Yeah. You know, that's a great tip. Curtains are a really, you know, big thing. I would say linen and lined are the way to go. And especially if you have like white walls, like a a nice sandy linen color is always pretty. It kind of holds up, you know, the test of time. Then beds. So if you have the ceiling height, there's two ways I usually do small rooms. If you have the ceiling height, doing like a canopy bed of some sort, it always makes it feel more grand. It, d- it did with hers because you did that with her room. And I was like, how's that bed going to fit in there? And it did. It made it look like a grand room. It does. And it was such a small room. Because you're adding a lot of height. Yeah. And then we just did smaller side tables, you know, obviously that fit and you know, pretty lamps and such. Mm-hmm. But that canopy bed really does help. If you reference my beach photos for my beach house, mm-hmm. those, are, it, I mean, look, that's no shanty over there at the beach, but yeah. the rooms are small. <laughs> you know, the rooms are not yeah. big. It, it, you know, small rooms doesn't necessarily mean cheap. Some pe- builders just build small yeah. rooms. Yeah. And so I have a small room and I use a canopy bed. If you go reference my beach mm-hmm. photos, I think we're going to shoot your sister or go in and do mm-hmm. something for your sister's house to kind of explain this more to people. If if you don't do a canopy bed because maybe you have like really short ceilings and you measure and it just, it like actually doesn't fit, then I would always do like a lower simple bed, just like a linen, simple backboard that is just kind of very simplistic, mm-hmm. doesn't have a lot of tufting or a lot of mm-hmm. nail heads, just a very, very simple bed. If it has like the frame to it, great. If it doesn't, you can get like a linen bed skirt and just use like very flowy bedding, nothing too fussy, just, you know, kind of all linen bedding yeah. and then do a large, large piece of art. Okay. Whether Over the make, bed? Over the bed. Yeah. Whether you make it yourself. And I'm talking like 50 by 60, 70 by 80. In order to get that, like you can make it yourself. Yeah. You know, take the color sandbar from Sharon Williams and I mean, cover up start a piece of exactly. Yeah. A, a piece of plywood, a piece of canvas. Mm-hmm. Canvas can actually be a little bit expensive, but just create your own unique. Big, I mean, literally now a days, I swear I could take like a big, huge piece of plywood, paint it sandbar and put a little white dot a on mark. it. And, and it's art. And it's art. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's great. I mean, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, but if it's big, you can't, you know, it, it looks expensive if, yeah. if it's big. So that's yeah. another way to approach like, you know, but just less, just to try not to fill your space up. Just do, you know, style your little nightstands appropriately. Try to get all the, just take everything out first and then go back in with what's important. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know, with my sister's room too, she kept wanting to get bigger pieces to make her room bigger, but you were like, she cannot do a nightstand over 22 inches. Yeah. And it's like the smallest nightstand, but it works. It just, it's, it was all about the scale of the furniture. Yes. Yeah. Another question was, there's like literally so many questions. <laughs> That I'm looking at and I'm like, okay, which, which one do we even go in the direction of? How do you make a home look more luxurious when you're on a budget? Like what are some of the things that you can do? I'm assuming like art is one of those things. So yeah, you know, one thing that you can definitely do to make your, you know, room pop or feel, feel more planned out. A couple things. You know, big art, like I'm saying. And mm-hmm. I mean, it, literally you can make your own big art. Mm-hmm. Just start Googling photos and Yep. <laughs> Let your kid do it. Uh-huh. The second is, you know, wall lights often look more thoughtful. Yes. They're plug-in wall lights that yeah. plug in, uh-huh. you know. And so wall lights always look like I'm looking at the ones behind your head. They always look more thought. And they aren't even wired. We do. Oh, do yeah. we not even do that? No. No way. No. no. Well, like cheaper. You hang them up. It's for looks. It's for looks. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to turn them on anyway. <laughs> and so they always look more thoughtful. So there's plug-in okay. types. And that that is definitely, most designers use a lot of wall lights. And then you go into places where designers haven't been and there's no wall lights, mm-hmm. you know? So that always looks like a designer's been in your home yeah. if you see some wall lights. 
I like even like very simple ones, like small little brass ones. Mm-hmm. Like they don't have to be this huge, yep. crazy statement. Mm-hmm. I believe that a really well organized space, always like a more simplistic space, like mm-hmm. a like less, just less, in less it. of better things. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, just, just yeah. less of better things. Mm-hmm. So rugs that are appropriate sizes. For sure. So we do carpet cuts all the time. Like yes. All Myers, of mine, I think. All of, is... Even when I'm, I mean, this is high end, so like, mm-hmm. but finding, and there's different levels of carpet, right? Like maybe the carpet that we chose for you wasn't like the low, low, mm-hmm. but you can go in and find like cheaper carpets. But yeah. Having a, it doesn't have to have a pattern on it, nothing, but having something that all the furniture sits on definitely looks more thought out. Yes. Like you meant to do That's it. That's a great tip. Mm-hmm. And you can cut it to the exact size that you need. So like, mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to have CAD and all the things that we use. Just put your furniture out and then measure around it. Yes, and that's, the that's rug a great size, tip. You know, and you also can layer rugs if you already had rugs. Like yep. you can, you guys layer rugs. Out. Okay, yeah, that's the, a great layer rugs all the time. Great tips. Okay, and I don't know if you even want to share this. Like, what are your favorite places to source art for, like a person off the street that's not you guys, like artists? Like, what are my favorite artists or whatever? Like, probably purchased. like. Pur- to purchase art. To purchase art. That so you're willing to share. There's <laughs> one new one that I've been doing. All posters. All posters. Okay. Before I say that, I'm actually going to whip up my phone and Google it and just make sure that that's right. Y'all source things off of Etsy too, right? Etsy is a huge one. Etsy's pretty cool because, yeah, it's allposters.com. Okay. There's an artist that I like on it, Sophie Lynn. Her surf's out of Europe. If you were to purchase it, I have it in my beach house and in my office. If you were to purchase that, it, she's, I think, uh, from Europe somewhere. But mm-hmm. uh, if you, I've, I've tried to source her. All right, it's like thirty six thousand dollars or something. Oh, crazy. it's so expensive. And then you go to all posters, it's like a hundred and something dollars. <gasps> oh my gosh! How but funny. it's signed and it's it's texturized. It's a texturized print. Interesting. And I'm like pretty particular about stuff like that. So, and Etsy. What I love about Etsy and Minted is that those are oh, actual, we love Minted too. Yeah. yeah, those are actual artists. You yeah, know, it's not they're reprints, but they're you know. But a funny thing is, is one of my friends, I had this mountain, this blue mountain thing for Adeline's room when she had a nursery mm-hmm. and it was huge, it was like 40 by 60, got it off minted. And my friend found the artist of that because wow. she liked it, but she didn't want the blue. Yeah. That's all that minted, you know, sold. Uh-huh. She went and found the artist. And that is cool because they say the artist's name. They say the artist's name. I mean, name. almost all the art in this house, besides what we did custom with local designers yeah. or chambers that we've got. Uh, chambers Estelle. Stell. How do you say the last Chambers name? Estelle, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I talked to her on Instagram. I, I really like her, but yeah. like I couldn't, I didn't know how to pronounce it. Is all off of Minted. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's really great advice and like something that everybody can kind of access. Yeah. To. Yeah, for sure. And also like local art shows. I have found all of my artists that I love dearly at like local like college art shows like that's awesome the harding art show yeah. is where i find so most of the artists that we're using you know they're actually not out of new york and la they're out of alabama and that's cool you know uh, because mm-hmm. who's to say that you're from a certain state so you're a better artist mm-hmm. it's and i actually work with these artists a ton and like and try to help them hone their craft to say like hey this is what people are wanting like mm-hmm. change that color. You did that this. with the Johnny and June in my room because like yep. we used Sydney Clawson and she was amazing. And you yep. said, can we use a little bit lighter yeah. of the, whatever she uses, charcoal? Yeah, charcoal. It can we find so a cool. lighter charcoal? And I think that's the only one we've ever done like that. And, yeah. You know, she had never done that before. She did obviously a great job. Okay. And then I'm going to ask like two more questions and then I want you to talk about your product line before we finish. So people always ask how to style shelves. And I feel like it's something that you can... It's very personal, but we had styled my shelves before was just what I had laying around. And I swear, sometimes like you have something in your room that sticks out, sticks out like a sore thumb. It was all old stuff from my old life. It had so much pink on it. And you guys were like, we're just going to do it. Like, let's actually do the shelves. Yes. And I love the shelves now because they like go away yes. in a way. And they're yes. monochromatic. Yes. But they still feel like me. Yeah. So what are some tips for styling shelves? So tips for styling shelves is like small pieces of art. Mm-hmm. So again, this is something where you can like paint little dots on a sheet of paper or lines <laughs> or whatever, but you know, there's some cool frames now at West Elm. Target has like a wood one that I, that I used recently used for my playroom. Leaning art in the back of a shelf is always like a huge It's a thing. great tip. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. people don't think about art on shelves, but it's actually one of the main things. Mm-hmm. We recently did one where, you know, it, in all these houses, these builders go and put a hundred thousand bookshelves in these houses <laughs> and you're like, you know, it costs money to fill those up. Yeah, I could have. I could have literally bought. It's like, a lot. It's like I those coffee table books are expensive. Oh my goodness! I could have bought a custom piece of art for yeah. how many coffee tables I had yeah. books I had to buy 
to fill the shelf up that, that's all over this house. So, but one of the things that we did, we, we ran into this room where there's tons of bookshelves. They were all that wood. And we actually painted that room dark. It was like a media room. And, you know, Polly looks at me, she's like, what are we going to do with these shelves? It's like, you're going to get a big piece of art. And you're going to hang it right on the front mm-hmm. of that shelf. Oh, and that's so cool. She, so we took out the shelves on a certain point. It was like a whole wall. We took out all the shelves and then like, you know, on the trim piece, it's like divider that is piece. Cool. We hung like a huge piece of art. So actually nothing went on those shelves behind that. And then we had very, uh, like uh-huh. many less shelves because the shelves that you're talking about are not the shelves that we're looking at like right yeah. now that are beautiful. They're just this wood shelves that that's cool people put up so if you go through different designers work you'll see like art hung on the trim pieces in mm-hmm. front of shelves that takes up some space coffee table books are a big thing you can get them on amazon the bigger the better they're not cheap there's no way around it but they really do really really help and then objects baskets and objects so another thing that you can do is just get on amazon and like google concrete pieces or marble pieces and you'll find some pretty affordable like concrete pieces or wood pieces and just structural objects like on stacks of coffee table books or beside it spread them out are kind of the what you know kind of how we that's a great our- that's you just described it perfectly and i like how you know if i would have been styling that shelf that we're looking at right now i would have put all the coffee table books going the same way but you did some vertical some horizontal yep. i also would have been like okay like i'll get two of these vases that are the same but no, like everything on here is is different. Like you have yep. two vases there, but one is this size and one is a smaller size. Yes. And I like how you put the baskets at the bottom because it hides everything. Yes. So there's nothing that gets cluttered and messy. Because yes. it, it feels like in my space, and a lot of people ask, like, how do you make things uncluttered? The more cluttered things get, like the more tiny things I put on things, the more it just doesn't feel peaceful. like it flows. Yeah. It doesn't feel peaceful to me when I look at it. No. Or anybody else probably that walks into my house. No. Unless it's Christmas in your grandma's house, I feel like you don't need 19,000 figurines, yeah. you know, around. Uh, yeah, 100%. So a, a huge thing that is, is, and this is not all designers' theories by by any means, you know, but, and it's huge in design right now. More is more, you know, yeah. and but lots of little little stuff. For me personally, and this is not how I design all my homes because I design, you know, whatever the client wants. But for me, I just want to feel peaceful in my mm-hmm. space, you know, I really do. I go to work all day. I want to be home with my kids. And whatever brings peace, which is usually like an uncluttered, simplistic way of living, mm-hmm. is is how I want to live. Yeah. And it just I go to the beach for the same reason. Mm-hmm. It gives me, allows me to breathe. Yeah. And, you know, I want to come home and be able to breathe. Yeah. And so you'll find me reorganizing a bunch. Sometimes if you sometimes if you just get rid of some stuff. Isn't that the truth? Edit your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Take it all off. And then put like 30% it? of it 30% back. 30% of it back. <laughs> you don't have to buy anything. You yeah. have to go sell it, make money. Mm-hmm. Or you can take everything out. And if you want to freshen something up, you guys go to Target a lot and fill in yes, things for, for people sure. that want to fill in spaces. Of course, you're using very high end things and custom stuff, but there are pieces in mix. here for, that are from Target. Target 100%. Yeah. Uh-huh. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And you know, all these tips for people that don't have the budget that. Jason Aldean and Thomas yeah. Rhett Aikens and yeah. all of these people that you do yeah. their homes, Maren Morris, Haley Hubbard, they don't always have that budget. They, no. Most people don't have that budget. Most people but don't you have that can budget. still design a home that makes you feel happy. peaceful and happy. And you know, one of the greatest tips that you gave me when I was buying my house and and I did this thing where I knew I, I was going to have April do a, a couple rooms in my house here or there. I bought a spec home, you know, or a home that was already built. I guess it's called a spec home. Mm-hmm. And I thought I walked into wet restoration hardware, which April's not a huge fan of restoration hardware, I will say. <laughs> and I spent I, a lot of money. <laughs> and I thought, okay, hey, April, I got, here's all the stuff I got. And you went, mm, okay. Just so you know, that stuff, it, when you put it in your space, it's not going to look the same. You got to fill in the blanks. You got to layer and texture and all of this stuff. And you told me this, this tip A in the, in the beginning, even before this, and you were like, don't like blow your budget on your house. Don't spend all of the money on the house. You don't want to walk into your house and in five years, like rooms aren't decorated because you spent all the money on the house and then you don't decorate the inside, which is the part that you actually live in. Yeah. That was such a good tip. And I bought a house that was cheaper than what I would have spent. Yeah. And I was able to Let me tell you what. I, people buy these huge houses all the time. They call me and they're like, what does it cost to furnish it? I'm like, a lot. A lot? Because you uh, bought a big old house. Because you bought a huge... Like, what do you think this was? You uh-huh. think it was, it was, it was <laughs> I'm like a magician. I'm just going to show up like a wave yes. of magic wand. Like, I don't... You know. So, yeah. One huge thing is 
live below your means. Yes. You know, stuff doesn't make you happy. I mean, my God, everybody's trying to free Britney right now. If that's not a story. Yeah. (laughs) If that's not a story, you know, it's that crap doesn't make you happy. You know, not that I'm not saying that she was materialistic. What I'm saying is she had everything in the world Mm -hmm. at her, you know, fingertips and and her life is is not okay right now. Yeah. And she had all the success, all the money, all the things, all the cars, all the houses, all the crap. Yes. And, you know, and I could repeat that story up one million times over. So live below your means and just, you know, live your life well, I guess. And mm-hmm. also when you're doing your home, if you're on a budget, it, it's okay to just every client that walks through my door, when they ask me to spread a budget throughout their house. Mm-hmm. And I know that every room is going to be a quarter of the way done or half done, my answer is no. It's hard no. That's such a, te- yeah. Hard no. Nobody is happy that way. You have spent all this money and it's half and done. And it doesn't feel finished. And it doesn't feel finished. And then you're extremely frustrated because look, you spent a lot of money mm-hmm. and it still doesn't feel right. It's how I felt after I spent all that money at restoration. It is. And you were like, okay, well, let's start now. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but I already spent you're blank. Like, yeah, blank amount of money. I have like five pieces. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that doesn't fill up a house. You got a lot it more, a long way to go. And so- You know, if you could focus your money and look, there are some sand colored restoration sofas that I love. There are, I love a lot of their wood pieces. Can't find them anywhere else except on Mm restorationhardware.com. But I will say it is, if you're listening to restoration, it's marketing geniuses Mm -hmm. because when that, I have the distinct job of taking that stuff and you're looking at a house and like, you know, the Maldives. Mm -hmm. It don't look the same. <laughs> it don't look the same. <laughs> Do a photo shoot in America, please. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and, you know, you bring that back and you spend a lot of money and it doesn't have the effect. So just focus your money on the rooms that people see yeah. first mm-hmm. and then branch out to the rooms that you personally use. And then last, do rooms that nobody sees and you probably don't really use that much. So, uh, that's such great advice. That's, and you finish the rooms that people see first before finish. you start spreading out. Money everywhere. Other. That is such great advice. Okay. I, I want to end on that advice because, A, you talked about the thing that I always talk about on the podcast is like, is you want to just live your life well. And does it feel good to have this enormous house on the outside and to be sitting in it and be like, ugh. I can't buy a side table or I can't do the lighting. Like, no, we live in our homes. Like, it should matter more how we feel in our spaces than what people see on the outside. So that was great advice. Okay. And speaking of spaces, so April, if you guys follow her on YouTube or on Instagram, she shows a lot of these gorgeous big celebrity homes that she does. But you also show your own home and your other designers on your team's home. And you're coming out with a product line soon. So what's going to be in the product line? Is it furniture? Is it accessories? Or what's it going to start as? So we're starting at, you know, it will evolve for sure. Like anything that you take on, it so, sounds so amazing and so fun. And then you're like, oh my God, this is so hard. <laughs> right now we're in really deep waters with the wood and trying to, you know, I'm not willing to cut corners, mm-hmm. you know, and when you're not, it costs money. It's just, you know, it's it's a difficult thing to produce well. So... What will be in the line is bedding, which I'm super excited mm-hmm. about. So a lot of people ask me like, where do you get these big pillows on your bed and this kind of thing? And a lot of those are made. Like I have those mm-hmm. made. So yeah. the bedding is not just going to be like, uh, you know, the standard bedding. It's going to be linens and things, but we have some colors coming out that I really love. And then we also have some sizes for the shams and stuff that I really love. Awesome. Awesome. So really excited about that. There's a lot of ceramics. There's a lot of wood. One of the things um, I haven't told anybody that else, I mean, I swear, I don't even think my own husband knows this right now, but I'm going to put this <laughs> on because I think it's coming out like closer to the product line. My most excited things about the line. I'm so excited. I can hardly, if I can get one for myself, I'd be happy, but nobody yeah. will let me have it. <laughs> Is I was in bed and I can directly see into my bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I am not one of those people that like, put stuff up. Mm-hmm. Like all my stuff that I use every day, it's out and it's going to stay out. That's that. Yeah. No other Same. way. Around. It's mm-hmm. no other way around it. Mm-hmm. And I put it, I try to, put, and I've gotten to the point where I don't even put up when people come over. I just, it's just, <laughs> yeah. Yes, don't even care enough. <laughs> got kids, got bigger problems. Uh-huh. And so I, all of a sudden I was laying in bed. I was just like, I've got to come up with a way to hide all that crap. So the line is going to have there's these different like tones, like it's like, you know, woods and like different ceramics. So you're going to have different size trays, like there's going to be different size trays. 
that are made of ceramic and wood. Hopefully wood, but we for sure know ceramic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we have these cylinders uh-huh. that are different sizes, different heights, different colors, but all the colors mix well together. Okay. So you can measure your, because some people have like a Sarah, you know, she has a larger vanity, right. so she can do a bigger one. Uh-huh. I have like the singular vanity yeah. that has like a little mm-hmm. bit on the sides. So we made it to like both of those configurations or your sink mm-hmm. to put your little stuff out. So you can buy your tray and then you can buy your configuration. So like, oh, that's an amazing product. I'm so excited. So you can hide all your stuff and it's, it's and it all... doesn't have tops. So you're oh, going to see like a little it. bit of fluff. Like, yeah. you know, you're going to see like a brush head hanging out or a product hanging out. But essentially you're going to be like this cylinder jar is enough to hold my brush and some of my taller products. That's this is for my smaller product. little facial products. Mm-hmm. And I am going to keep this out all the time. And it's going to be hidden in these beautiful like decor pieces. That is a killer idea. How so has excited. nobody done that before? Why did we, you know, I can remember the days where I was buying all the acrylic storage things, but then yeah. it's like, you can see everything. You can see everything. Out. That's how mine is right now. Yes. You uh-huh. can see everything. That is awesome. And I can't wait. And and you guys, I'll link April's website, which I'm assuming like the products line will be sold like on your website. You'll hear about it on Instagram. Everybody follow her Instagram account. Yeah. I'm so excited for that. And just to follow like everything that you do, I know that you're going to do every single thing that is in the works right now that I know of. April and her team are are really headed in, in an amazing direction. And you guys, everybody listening to this podcast will see them in some capacity because they're 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 moving. Yeah, we're going. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're going. I hired the best of the best. Y'all. You did. I did. Well you're the best of the best and you pulled people around you that are amazing, but you are a wonderful leader and person and deserving of every bit of the success. So thank you. Thank you guys for listening to this episode and thank you so much to April. This was a fantastic episode and I'm so excited to share it with my people. Yay. (laughs) So, okay, everybody follow April on Instagram. I'll link everything in the show notes, everything April Tomlin interiors. And and you guys, when this line comes out in the summer, I'm sure it's going to sell like hotcakes. So I'll be sure to do a swipe up on Instagram and everything else and let you guys know so you can get your hands on it too. So thank you everyone for listening and tune in next Monday for another episode. Thanks for joining us on Living Fully with Mallory Irvin. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single minute of encouragement and inspiration to live your best life. Want more? Join us on MalloryIrvin.com so we can connect with you on Instagram and YouTube. Start living your life now. You've only got one. We'll see you next time.